You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. Both leaders exchanged good wishes on the advent of Eid Al Fitr, wishing both countries and their people continued progress and prosperity. And a telephone call was held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq Al Said of Oman. The two leaders exchanged congratulations and good wishes on Eid Al Fitr, wishing the two countries and their brotherly people more progress and prosperity and the Arab and Islamic nations many happy returns of the occasion. A telephone call was held today between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. They exchanged good wishes on the advent of Eid Al Fitr, wishing the two brotherly countries and people, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations, many happy returns and further growth and prosperity. Within the framework of the royal patronage of houses of worship and the reconstruction of the houses of Allah and an implementation of the order of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to launch a development plan for places of worship in all governorates of the Kingdom of Bahrain to open, restore and rehabilitate 20 mosques for the Sunni and Jafari endowments, the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments announced the opening of two houses of worship. On this occasion, the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, stated that the construction and reconstruction of places of worship has always been the subject of the care and attention of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, in a way that ensures the conduct of worship with ease and tranquility, expressing deep thanks and appreciation to the benefactors, all philanthropists who contribute to building and maintaining a number of mosques. Many places of worship are also open today after the completion of its comprehensive maintenance work. The move is in line with the order of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to immediately launch a development plan for for mosques across the kingdom's governorates, inaugurate and restore 20 mosques belonging to the Sunni and Jafari endowments located across different governorates of the kingdom, as well as to allocate sites and expedite the design and construction of 12 mosques in Salman town. Chairman of the Sunni Endowments Council, Dr. Sheikh Rashid bin Hamad Al Hajri, stressed the great interest that His Majesty the King attaches to the construction and construction of places of worship and the keenness and support of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to build and rehabilitate places of worship, praising the role of benefactors in strengthening community partnership and achieving social solidarity. Jafari Endowments Council Chairman Yusuf bin Saleh Has Saleh praised the great support enjoyed by various houses of worship in the kingdom. Thanks to the leadership of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and efforts to meet the needs of citizens regarding religious services. The Minister of Housing, Basim bin Yaqub al Hamar, has affirmed that the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, enjoy the great support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa and His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, noting that SDGs top the priorities of the government's work. The minister was speaking while meeting UN General Assembly President Abdullah Shahid at the UN headquarters in New York, where al Hamar is leading the kingdom's delegation to the high level meeting on the implementation of the new urban agenda and SG SDGs 2030. He highlighted the government's keenness on its strategic partnership with the UN to implement the new urban agenda and the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. He affirmed the Kingdom's leadership's prompt response to meet the requirements of SDGs through launching quality projects for the citizens, noting that Bahrain has invested 3.3 billion dinars to finance social housing projects since the establishment of the Ministry of Housing. He also pointed to the Kingdom's interest in implementing climate change initiatives, noting that the keynote speech delivered by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister at the UN Climate Change conference in Glasgow COP26 represents a roadmap for the government's work methodology and relevant authorities to reduce the challenges of climate change. The UNGA president recalled his visit to the kingdom earlier this year where he was warmly welcomed by His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, adding that he reviewed Bahraini UN cooperation during his meetings with the kingdom's officials. He congratulated Bahrain on submitting its second voluntary national review report on the SDGs and its report on human rights, noting that the kingdom has made major strides in deepening the concepts of human rights and applying them effectively. On the sidelines of the UN's General Assembly high-level meeting, the Minister of Housing met with Executive Director of the United Nations Human Settlement Program, Maimouna Mohamed Sharif. The Minister of Housing affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain is proud of its successful partnership and historical relations with the United Nations Human Settlement Program to implement international initiatives, noting that the Kingdom was able to take very advanced steps in implementing these goals in various fields. During the meeting, al Hamar reviewed the efforts of the Government of the Kingdom of Bahrain, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to implement the development goals 
which were mentioned in the Voluntary National Review Report. He added that the most prominent government efforts in this regard are focused on developing housing policies, taking interest in urban data and the elements of sustainability, establishing a framework for monitoring urban areas and housing, launching an urban greening project, establishing green and healthy cities, in addition to innovative and sustainable designs and efficient energy and resource management. For her part, the Executive Director of the United Nations Human Settlement Program, Maimouna Sharif, praised the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain in implementing the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals and its keenness to submit the second voluntary national report. She also lauded the Kingdom's keenness to attend the meeting of the high-level political forum in New York and the information and data contained in the Kingdom's speech about what has been accomplished, wishing the Kingdom of Bahrain's leadership, government and people continued success and prosperity. UN Habitat Executive Director commended Bahrain's efforts to implement the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals and its keenness to submit its second voluntary national review report on the SDGs in due course, given the importance of the report as a reference for the implementation of the SDGs. The Moon Sighting Panel convenes this evening at the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs to receive news and testimonies about the sighting of the Crescent of Shawwal, signaling the advent of Eid al-Fitr. The Council urged the public who sights the new Shawwal Crescent to contact the Moon Sighting Panel. The sighting of the Moon signifies the end of the holy month of Ramadan, the ninth month of the lunar-based calendar in Islam. In the Islamic calendar, Ramadan is followed by the month of Shawwal. The first three days of the month are celebrated as Eid al-Fitr.